time, but one thing that I noticed Sunday when Mr. Doug was here, I don't know if y'all caught this, but he used a lot of examples from that passage of scripture like I'd never thought about. But when he was talking about how tradition was for the groom to cover the wedding, of course, and it was an embarrassment if they ran out of stuff to serve, right? Well, it is an embarrassment if we are Christians and people can't see the Holy Spirit in Christ in us. Amen? So I thought about that Sunday. He did a good job at bringing things out like that as an example. But we're going to be singing about He Set Me Free this evening. We're going to open up with that. So I thought it went along. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God He set me free He set me free Yes, He set me free And He broke
I can identify some churches want to show you everything they know and how everyone wants to show everything they know in the spirit and you bring a man of God in and he, you know, after about an hour and a half, then they turn it over to him. <laughs> Is anybody with me tonight? <laughs> I've been there. I can write a book on it. I know. Trust me. <laughs> and I just, you know, there's one thing when the spirit's in something, but at any rate, we needed more. <laughs> How many is glad to be in God's house this midweek service tonight? You know, the night could be the night that the rapture of the church could take place. You know, I was thinking early this morning, some has a mentality of, well, it's just midweek, but I've never viewed it. <clears throat> Every opportunity we have to come to the house of God is a time to meet. Amen. It's not about just, well, it's midweek, so let's just dress down and, you know, just to have a little informal meeting. I've never understood that concept because God's house and God's business is serious. Can you say amen? If you have your Bibles, Judges tonight, chapter 15, <coughs> I want to share something dealing with the late, late, great Samson and a time in his life that he was uh, in desperation fighting the adversary. We are fighting an adversary. Can, I don't, you don't need to agree. You and I both know we are tonight. This is like uh, things like we have never seen before and what a great time we had Sunday, and uh, Brother Bartlett and I reminisced. I had really forgot this, but I want to give God the praise. At my first pastorate, um, we had over 17 people saved, and we didn't have a baptistry, and him and I did a joint baptism. I think there was about 25 total, but I'm going to tell you, God is good, amen? And most of those 17, to my knowledge, are still trucking, but through the years, I had really forgotten about that, and some things about my father, but anyway, Judges chapter 15, look at verse 14, and when, this is about Samson here, and when he came unto Lahaya, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord mightily came upon him, this is Samson, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burned with fire. And his bands loosed from off his hands, and he found a new jawbone of a donkey, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, as he made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramathea Lahaya. And he was sore athirst and called unto the Lord and said, Thou hast given the cry, this cry, this great deliverance into thy hand of thy servant, and now I die, 
for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Notice he's asking a question here. If you're reading from the NIV or the NSAB, it says he cried unto the Lord. Uh, verse 18 there refers to it as crying unto the Lord. Verse 19, look at it. But God clave and hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherewith he called thereof, the, wherewith he called the name thereof, in Hakora, which is in Lahaya until this day. Look at that word in Hakora. If I got it right, it's Arabic. But that word literally means the fountain of the crier. It's, it's what that word means. It really got me some time back. Or spring of the caller. And it's believed that this place is still there today in Lahaya. That's how I pronounce it. Someone may pronounce it uh, differently. <clears throat> the replenishing fountain is what I want to speak on tonight. As the Lord tarries, Jesus, have your way in this room. Clear our minds, roll back the portals of heaven, and visit us mightily. Those that are watching and those that are here tonight that has sacrificed their time, this midweek service, to hear from you. And everybody said, amen and amen. Can you imagine tonight men taking the jawbone, a literal jawbone of a donkey, and slay, slaying a thousand men? That's why we believe in the supernatural of God. Amen. One man, it says in this same chapter, that he tied foxtails together and slew men. And here they came to get him. As he had did this in Judea. And now they had came to get him. Verse 14, uh, it brings out, you know, they had came unto uh, him there when he had came down to Leah. And they were binding him or going to bound him to take him to the Philistines. And, you know, his whole ministry was, uh, you know, there's many, many ways you can look at Samson and you could preach on him until the Lord comes. But tonight we're going to look at it from a little bit different perspective of what he was doing in his time of ministry and in his journey as he was carrying out his daily duties. He was there to rule, uh, you know, the epistle of Judges. Uh, we know and understand that in that epistle that God would raise up a judge. There was Gideon, there was Deborah and Bar Barak, uh, there was Toler, uh, there was Ehud, and it goes on and on. It closes with the Levite and his concubine. But each one God would raise up and to do a great and mighty, magnificent work for him. And it was almost like unheard of at what they did, what Gideon did with 300 men, how that Deborah just drove a nail into the king's head. You know, how Gideon and slew there the, with 300 men slew uh, you know them there at media at the, the Midianites uh, and, and it just is full of story after story how Ehud stabbed the king with a dagger but now we get into a man that's just unheard of an incredible hulk of his day that had supernatural strength and he was born to parents that was not supposed to have children his mom was barren and his father and his dad was scared but the angel of the Lord showed up and said you're going to have a son but I want to talk about the fountain tonight because we're in a place of time that if we are not careful we'll forget about everything and we'll forget about this fountain and we'll forget about the availability of this fountain under the new covenant dispensation this fountain is forever as Jesus said to the woman at the well when you drink of this water you'll never thirst again as he said out of your bed shall flow rivers of living water. This is a fountain that will never run dry as Bill Gaither wrote about. It's a fountain where streams are ever flowing and we can come to that fountain and replenish our spirit man and be revitalized and go out into the world in these last days. Man, we need to take a trip back to the fountain in this time that we are in today. Look at what it says here in verse 18. He's asking a question. He's questioning the Lord. He's basically crying after the battle, after the fight, after he had slew. And he goes on here to say, I'm thirsty. He called out to the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. You have given me this great deliverance in the hand of your son. Being your servant, now shall I die for thirst. 
Many of us in this room are beat down and trodden. I've never, we have never experienced, we come out of a pandemic and we still are learning and finding. I found out that in our con- one, of, in one of our churches in the Cornerstone Conference of a man that died and eight days later, a preacher died and eight days later, the pastor of a church, him and his wife, eight days later died from this plague. So not all celebrities died with it. But we come out of that into an inflation hike like we've never seen. And the news is beyond depressing. Gasoline, near about $5 a gallon. We don't have a leader in the United States of America. And I'm not here to get into politicalism, but I'm here to tell you, you can see it for what it is. We have never been in a time that Washington does not have a leader that cannot lead and has any kind of answer for anything other than blessed gun control. Democrat or Republican, forget it. Everything is biblically fulfilled and everything is ready and in place for the Antichrist to step in. What else does the church of Jesus Christ need to see in these last days? In the United States of America, a nation that was founded off godly principles and honor and, 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 and you know democracy. And now we've, we are at a time that, that we've never seen. We have leadership that just don't have any kind of solution. Everything is going up, but your salaries, our salaries, everything is going up, and nobody is talking about it. But us in the church and everywhere else, nobody's talking about it. Yes, we got a problem, you know, with discipline in the world, but it's not from a fire, I mean, it's people that don't know how to use a firearm. And I need to get off this because that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. But getting back to the fountain, Samson was out fighting the battle. And he was winning in the race. And we are in this race of Christendom. But for about the last going into the four, three to four years, we're being beat down and trodden and depressed and disgusted like never before. I'm talking about Christians that are committing suicide. I got a text earlier today about a church plant of where the you know, there was two people that committed suicide. They just can't handle things. The frustration is higher than it's ever been. And I know religious people say, oh, you need to get close to God. I'm here to tell you, I'm close to God. And there's people that are close to God but the pressure is up like it's never been as it was with Samson here he was he was thirsty he needed his thirst quenched after fighting this battle many of us in this room and watching by live stream we don't need our physical thirst quenched but we need our spiritual thirst quenched water is symbolic of the spirit and we need to understand the importance of coming back to this fountain and revisiting this fountain and allowing Him to serve us a drink from the fountain. Praise His holy name. A drink of assurance and a drink of joy and victory and mercy that everything is going to be all right and that God is with us. This fountain provides a reviving. It revived His spirit as He drank out of the jawbone. It says His spirit revived when we drink from the wells of refreshing of Jesus Christ as Isaiah said with joy you shall draw from the wells of salvation there is a thirst that cannot be quenched by nothing else other than the fountain of Jesus Christ and it says in the scriptures that his spirit revived Genesis 45 and I believe 21 when Jacob had heard the news that Joseph was alive all those years. His spirit 
was barren. And the scripture says his spirit revived. Why? Because he heard the good news. My son is alive. Saddle up the donkey. We're going to Canaan where my son is. And the rest was history. But now we look and see where we are. No, we're not fighting with a jawbone of a donkey. But we're in an ungodly world. And we're in a time zone like we have never seen. It is gloom, despair, and everything. But listen. We cannot talk the language of this world. We have a tomorrow coming one way or another and we need to go back and redo it again and visit that well of replenishing and refreshing. Go back and revive our spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost was not a one-time thing of an experience and then that was the end of it. It is a continual going back to the well and getting a cup more. Oh, to quench my spiritual thirst in this ungodly place that I'm at go back to the well and draw from that well and get joy back in the camp yes we're living in twisted times we're living in perilous times we're living in wicked times men are waxing worse and worse they're heaping to themselves preachers and teachers telling them that their lifestyle of sin is alright how are we going to make it go back to the well and revive our spirit one more time in these last days that we are in. It is vital for us to do ministry. We have to stay at the well. We are the only Bible anybody will ever see. They got to see something different than out there. They got to see joy, hope, promise, and peace. Isn't that what the kingdom of God is? That's what we should talk. That's what we should display. That's what we should be. But without going to the well, he knew his thirst from the, from the dust, from the dust and the hot sun where he was at. It was beating on him. He had fought a fight, killed a thousand people. He was thirsty. And he said, God, are you going to let me die and the uncircumcised take me? You see, he knew like David, the promise of God. Stay with me. The Jewish people looked at Philistines as you don't belong to the covenant. You are uncircumcised. We belong to the covenant. We are circumcised. Let me just put the bifocals on and read it again. He says, "Are thou and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. He knew and understood he was part of the covenant promise under the Old Testament and under the Old Law dispensation. That was the way they viewed we are people of the covenant because we have been circumcised and we are of the Abrahamic stock. Anybody else that's not of this stock has not been circumcised. They will never overcome us or never overtake us. We have to apply that same mentality in the New Testament. I'm a child of the King. I'm on my way to heaven. If I'm not spirit filled I can get baptized in the spirit and the joy of the Lord will be my strength, my comfort my shield, my guide, my buckler, my protector and everything else and then some along the way but we must go back to the fountain and let it revive us, amen all this we need revival revival is so much more out of all the years that I preach revivals and I got one I think this year but revival is more than a man coming that can quote scripture and, and just uh, preach it from one end to the other. Revival starts with our heart. And we must get revived. You understand what I'm saying? That's what revival is. Better yet, if you're not going to see it on Sunday and Wednesday, what's the chances of seeing it Monday and Tuesday? You never thought about that, have you? If they're not coming on Sunday and Wednesday, you think they're going to come on Monday and Tuesday? Can I just talk? Let's just get real here, okay? You would think churches globally would be packed. The handwriting's on the wall. But they are not. They're declining left and right. The answer is not just getting a man to come in 
as many think, and we're going to get them all right. Go through the Bible and underline revive. Revive us again, David said. Revive us in Isaiah. Revive us in Ezekiel. And it goes on and on in the Old Covenant, meaning revive us. They're asking God, bring it back. You see, it's in our heart. I mean, you got to have the preaching. Don't get me wrong in the anointing and all of the above. Yes, that is part of the makeup. But revival is not a man coming in and getting people's emotions worked up and get them carrying on. Because if you got the goods, honey, get that battery charged. You want me to tell you how to charge it? Take it back to the well and plug it into the one that give it to you. Bless God and you'll see some sparks and you'll be talking in an unknown tongue and you'll be praying in the Spirit. You'll be waking up at 3 and 4 o'clock praying in the Spirit and you'll feel the Shekinah glory of God. Honey, if you need recharging, you just drag that thing and get you a jumper cable and stick it in that water of the fountain of Jesus Christ. And buddy, you'll feel electromagnet spiritually speaking like you ain't never felt. Amen? Glory to God, I wish I knew this 20 years ago. We must revive. It says his spirit came back. In the stuff we're in, there is a battle for our, not only mind, but our spirit. And we got to keep our spirit revitalized and replenished. It says it, his spirit revived. There is nothing worse than having a barren spirit. We've all been there. We've all not had a shout. Things come our way. Affliction, heartache. Things right now. People trying to buy a house. Can't buy a house. I mean, you know, people that's trying to make ends meet. Don't know what having to sell stuff to make ends meet. And then we got a system that promotes laziness and promotes deadbeats and they're getting a check weekly. I mean, their insurance is getting paid. I don't understand the concept of why we pay high dollar insurance. I said this to somebody the other day. I'm just going to say it, live stream or no live stream. I don't even know why I mean paying it because they, don't, they live off the government. They don't have to have anything and they're going to get the same health care that I'm getting and everybody else. Oh, don't it make you mad? Oh, it'll make you want to introduce somebody to the fivefold. There's nothing wrong with getting help if you need it. But I'm talking about we got too many people that is just full-blown lazy in Jesus' name. I can't find a job. Oh, bless God. I never had that problem. Work found me. I didn't find work. It just had a way of rolling right on in. You think I'm going to believe this watered-down, lazy society that we are in today? Kids are so programmed, they can't even look you dead in the eye and make eye contact. They can't even talk to you. I'm talking about adults. They can't even talk to you. They can text you or put a, a blessed letter in the mail but Ken they can't come to you and look you eyeball to eyeball and say I got a problem with you or I don't like this the Bible says go to it honey but we have produced generations of full blown laziness thank God for us that was raised you look a man or a woman dead in the eye that's just it amen but because of technology, they can't even look at you straight in the eye. And then they talk some language that's 10 feet over your head. What's that got to do with replenishing? If we don't stay replenished, we're going to lose our sanctification. That's what I'm trying to say. Because of the mess we're dealing with today. Notice what he says there. But go back to the well. Go back to the, the fountain. Praise His holy name. But it's a fountain offers refreshing refreshing and repentance I want to read something out of Acts chapter 3 and 19 repent and be converted so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord you see this is a fountain that offers and specializes in repenting forgiveness of sins Jesus can and will forgive sin and then there is a refreshing from that Paul Peter said when times of refreshing you see too many people name the name of Jesus and they even though after we've been saved and on our way to heaven that don't mean that we don't have to go back to the fountain and, and just say God I messed up I need forgive me I need to repent 
You see, repentance brings refreshing. You see what I'm saying? But carnality and hatred and, 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 and all that kind of stuff, jealousy and pride and, and me, I was reading a book the other day and, you know, me, I, myself, three, three, three things right there. You know, many times, good old going back to the fountain of repentance will check us. Repentance brings refreshment. How many knows what I'm talking about? When we fail and mess up, when we go back to God and humble ourselves, isn't there a joy and a, a good sensation you feel in your spirit? That, that's what it's all about. It's not about running around, oh, I don't sin. I mean, just get real here, amen? But our, we're in a time that people don't understand. In order to get to heaven, you got to repent. In order to see Jesus, you got to change your ways. In order to have your name written down in the Lamb's book of life, you got to come out and come to Him. It's just that simple. I know that things has changed, but the plan of salvation has not changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, He's not caught up in legalism and all that nonsense, but there has got to be a repentive heart, and He specializes in, and the fountain replenishes, and and it brings that back and it brings a, 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 a spirit of revitalization, but it refreshes the heart. See, too many, too many people that name Christ are hard-hearted. You know, we talked about this Sunday after lunch. You know, some people just want to control everything. I think they think God's called them in a controlling ministry. You know, if you remember the story of the Ark of the Covenant, that's what happened with Uzzah. He saw, well, I'm just going to help him with the Ark of the Covenant. He ended up dying on count of it. You know the story, right? And David got fearful. David got mad, but he got fearful. He knew he couldn't get mad at God, so he got fearful. But God don't need anybody trying to control anything. He needs, God, he needs people to follow him. But too many times we get caught up in things and in stuff that we do not properly inventory ourselves. Just because our name's written down and we're on our way to heaven does not mean that we don't have to do as Paul said in Corinthians, examine yourselves, know where you are in the faith. Now I'm paraphrasing a little bit of that. But secondly, coming to this fountain will produce genuine repentance and godly sorry for your sins. I know everybody's going to heaven today but you see, people that are going to heaven is going to have a lifestyle to support it. There's a difference in everybody say I'm going and, every, and then people that's got a lifestyle to support what they have. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody that's on their way to heaven is going to be all about Jesus. They're going to have a heart for the harvest. That's a message in itself. They're going to have a mind after Jesus Christ. They're going to not be conformed to the world and they're not going to be trying to, to shenaniganize everything and, and bring the world in and, and be so overly acceptive of every little thing and bash everything in Scripture. There is a difference in legalism and conviction. Amen. There's a difference in preaching against sin and negativity. And I've called this one one time, but just because me or any other man of God preaches against sin, that is not anything negative. That's nothing more than the Word of God being delivered by the Holy Spirit spirit amen and if it upsets somebody bless God I'm sorry but I want to keep you out of hell I don't want to be in hell with you because I watered it down and I didn't I didn't tell what the Lord laid on my heart and what the scripture said the Bible calls the role and makes it clear who is going to be in heaven and who's not going to be in heaven amen repentance will bring refreshing you know why this world is so ill you know a lady told me the other day at walmart she said i i, I can't lose weight i just i eat because i'm stressed she said i don't know why i'm stressed i'm just mad and she was serious she said i'm just so mad i can't take it all this pressure and she's out there trying to work and make a living everything around is happening it's enough to make anybody mad but coming to that well will refresh us. My God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. Let it get to $10 a gallon. My God shall supply 
That's not name it and claim it. That is the Word of God. There was famine in the land, and honey, there weren't no corn anywhere. But they saddled up, and they got, they got the hold of Jacob's family, and they said there's corn in Canaan, and off he went. Why? He was God's people. He was God's personal. And any time you read in the Scriptures, everything may be falling down, but God's people are still standing level and going over. I'm here to tell you we are not going under. I'm not looking a lottery ticket to get me out of this I pay my tithes and the word of God says prove me here with if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour ye out a blessing that you will not contain that's my answer I don't need a 10, a 9, an 8 and a 12 I'm not looking for the power bowl the super bowl or any other kind of arch bowl to help me out I know what the word of God says the problem is too many named Jesus but they don't know the word of God and they don't live the word of God and they don't apply the word of God the word of God is is real. The Word of God has stood the test of time. The Word of God will make you shout. It'll make you happy in the midnight hour. They were in jail, going to be killed the next day. And honey, they began to sing, look what the Lord has done. They didn't get on the phone tree and say, oh, I'm about to die. Oh, my gallbladder's hanging out of my kidney. Oh, it's coming out of my nose and leaking out of my ear. Oh, I sound like some church people, don't I? Oh, I had to roll in here. Bless God, I can't even breathe. I'm going to tell you, I sat at the doctor's office five hours, but I can't even stay in here 30 minutes. No, not by no means. Honey, they were ringing the bells of heaven, and the Holy Ghost began to fall, and the power of God fell in the I feel like preaching. The power of God fell. Would to God that somebody would get a revelation of that now. They didn't spend 20 minutes with all that nonsense. The well, the fountain will replenish. I've said it and said it and said it. We praise God. Put God right on out. With all the stuff. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, whatever it is. Repentance will bring refreshing refreshing as you and I know just don't ask with some people because it's never good amen just go on you know, it's never going to be good I told somebody not long ago when some people get to heaven they're not going to need a new body because they've had everything redone here and I'm not talking about cosmetic surgery for the women I'm just talking about some's got everything replaced I'm thinking about what is real what what literally is left real on the skeletal system we heard a testimony Sunday of an 85-year-old Buddhist being, and I'd heard that story before, being healed, and it brought revival. He got out of the wheelchair. Why does it happen over there, Chris, and not over here? Because people over here just don't believe it. That's exactly why. They, they don't believe it over here. They believe they're going to get saved, but they don't believe anything else about the Bible. They ain't going to believe you that you can pray and get out of a wheelchair. Let me move on. The fountain, this fountain is a fountain that will replenish, replenish, replenish. There's no end to it. Revelation talks about the rivers of life. Ezekiel 40, what is it, 41, 42, talks about the rivers. You see, the river is flowing. It is continual. It is ongoing. It is unstoppable. But this fountain, more than anything as believers in Christ, this fountain, and I've already said it once, but it reassures me and you that we're going to make it and we're going to go to the end. I want you to look tonight at verse 20. After he had drank from the rock, it says, He judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. You see, every visit to this fountain reassures me and you. It is a fountain of reassurance for us believers. It reassures me as I've already brought out. Though he slay me, yet I will serve him. It reassures me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I mean, it just reassures me. I'm the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of bondage. 
It reassures me of Deuteronomy 28. It reassures me of Isaiah 55. It reassures me of Hebrews 11 and 12 and even Hebrews chapter 1. It is a continual reassurance to my spirit man of what has taken place. You see, you got to come to this fountain on a regular basis. You got to come regularly. Samson, we're using it as a figurative, Samson was thirsty, fleshly, physically speaking. But many of us in this room and everywhere else are thirsty spiritually. How much more can we take? What else is going to happen? People are looking after their family members. They can't get help and they need help. They've worked all their life and can't get anything. I'm going to tell you, it's like a pure bomb almost. There's so much pressure. There's so many things going on. There's so much confusion and, and everything. And thank God we can come together tonight and sing and praise and lift up the name of Jesus because it does encourage us, don't us? It encourages me when I sing he set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound praise God I'm not hell bound anymore I'm glory bound praise his holy name because of that fountain so I can sing that and oh yes I'm going to fly away call it old fashioned or over the hill but there is going to come a day that I'm going to check out of here and you're going to check out of here I don't know exactly the time but I know what the Bible says that we're going to ascend and there's going to be a meeting in the air and we're going to see the Son of God but until that day comes we got to go back to this fountain on a regular basis and we got to draw from this fountain and we got to reassure ourselves everything is going to be alright what was that song Walt used to sing I've got a feeling everything's going to be alright it's going to be alright it's going to be okay we are going to make it folks let it, let it fall where it may. We're going to make it. God's people don't go down. We go over. We don't go under. We go over from Genesis right up to Reve even at the end of Revelation. None of God's people has ever went down. They've always went to the other side. He brought that out in the four evangels. Get in the boat. We're going to the other side. But even in Genesis in the beginning, they went to the other side as early as Noah, then Moses, uh, then uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, and, and all and on and on and on and on. Even that great epistle of Ruth, I uh, I've read it real quickly this morning. Even a Moabite, who, Lord help me, Jesus, look at Ruth, the lowest of the scum, but she sold out to the Lord and followed that mother-in-law and said, I'm going to go where you go. I'm going to stay where you stay. And buddy, her faithfulness landed her, the man of men. Amen. And out of that lineage come the great King David who will rule and reign and Jesus will sit on His throne in the millennial kingdom. You see what happened? when we get a vision and a clear understanding of reassuring ourselves I'm in this world but I'm not of this world I'm not planning on that system to do anything for me I'm planning on the heavenly system to take care of me and it's did it this far for many of us in this room many in glory this is a fountain and we need to visit it on a daily basis. We need to visit it regularly, continuously. Talk about revival. Let's get together and have revival. Let's revival, revival. I want to tell you one of the greatest revivals you can have started in your home. And it will evolve out of your home into your workplace. And it will be with you in the church. You know why so many churches are dead and dry and stale and starchy? The people in, in those churches, they're not revived. They're not going to this well. I hate to just tell it like it is. But they're clammy. They're starchy. There's a reason. But one of many reasons is they're not visiting this fountain. Amen? They're not coming. The cry. In a Korah, that Arabic word means fountain of the crier. The fountain of the one that calleth. Think about that thing. 
Jesus is ready and willing. And he wants us to come by his way. Amen. I know it's Wednesday night. But we need a continual replenishing. Amen. I want to thank all for watching us by live streaming.